Ask Science. Does penis size come from your mother's side? According to this study in rats, penis length appears to be affected by fetal exposure to testosterone in utero. There's a critical window in gestation where the more testosterone the fetus gets, the larger the penis. Outside of this window, testosterone does not have an effect on ultimate size. As for genetics, there don't seem to be any studies. You could try a Google Scholar search. If you run into a paywall use Sci-Hub. So if the mother was an athlete or talking extra testosterone the baby might be more well endowed? And here I thought the first favor I'd do for my unborn son was just a gerbil life a plan. Realistically, there are multiple owls, portions of your DNA that can be expressed as a trait, that would contribute to most traits, including probably penis size. Some of the owls may be located in the sex chromosomes, X or Y. Other owls may be located in the autosomes, chromosome pairs 1 through 22. Genes located in the autosomes get passes down regardless of gender, this means that if the autosomes of the male and female are swapped, the possible traits of the offspring will remain the same. However, genes located in the sex chromosomes are specific to the X or the Y chromosome. If you are a male, you receive your Y chromosome and any genes that come with it from your father's side and you receive your X chromosome and any genes that come with it from your mother's side. Since we largely do not know what specific locations these genes are located, we cannot determine completely where exactly the size of your penis comes from. Not quite everything is dependent on multiple genes. However, if not then genetics only allows two or three discrete options. See, tongue rolling, widow's peak, blood types. But yes, a trait showing continuous variance won't be controlled by a single gene. So, not really. And it's not about chromosomes and genetics directly. Disclaimer, I'm a PhD candidate who studies this hormonal pathway for my thesis. There's a master hormone of sex hormones known as GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone. GnRH is produced by specific neurons in the brain and is known as the master switch for puberty and maturation. Generally GnRH signaling becomes active during adolescence, which will trigger the production of other hormones in a cascade that eventually result in the production of testosterone and estrogen. Now in utero, the baby is mostly exposed the maternal makeup of sex hormones. That being, male babies specifically have a short activation of GnRH signaling. This is called the postnatal mini puberty and during this time, GnRH signaling results in production of sex hormones, specifically testosterone. Now the timing of this mini puberty and duration have been linked the penis size, penis growth. Importantly, GnRH signaling is regulated by nutritional status and other hormones. So in the end, you can have identical twins with different penis sizes because it depends on both genetics and environment, nutrition. Edit, I didn't clearly explain this but penis growth mostly occurs after birth. That's when the male baby's GnRH hormones are being produced and subsequently testosterone is being made. This results in penis growth. Penis growth doesn't occur in utero because mom's body is making estrogen that prevents it. That being said, there are other genetics. A mix of information from both parents, the Y chromosome doesn't carry a lot of information, that control the base size of the penis, how big it'll be in utero. GnRH signaling will control how big it will grow from that base size. Also the length of the mini puberty is on average a month long. That being said, that can vary, depending on genetics and nutrition which regulates the production of GnRH. I can't remember where I heard or read this, I'll source this soon, but I recall that prostitutes will give their boys a longer penis because of the odds of a longer penis reaching the cervix over a smaller one has more chances of fertilizing the eggs. 
So in cultures where monogamy is so heavily prevalent, you rarely see any bigger dick sizes whereas in some cultures that allow multiple sex partners will see a lot of prevalence in pronounced sexual organs. I have a pretty large penis, but also very mild, nearly unnoticeable hyperspardias, a semispherical divot about 3 to 4 millimeters from urethra that is my protovagina. I know they both have to do with hormones in utero but it seems like there should be a negative correlation. Maybe I got lucky. Yes, that's an unusual combination but it's actually a mix of genetics, hormones, and environment. First, essentially all babies are first formed as female. That means that the gonads, sex organs, first develop as ovaries. This is where the Y chromosome comes in. The Y chromosome had way fewer genes than the X, but its main genes are called the SRY genes. The SRY genes cause the masculization of the gonads of the fetus, essentially making them stop going down the ovarian development pathway and instead develop into the testes. This is also when is believed that the protoclitoris is masculinized into the penis. There's not a lot of research on the clitoris unfortunately yet for us to exactly know if that's how it works but the essential shape and location to the penis makes them very similar. The weirdest part of this though is that the switch from ovaries to testes isn't a hard switch. Research now shows that there's a weird in between form we call the ovotestes that occurs in which the gonads can go either way. So I would assume that you may have some aberrant signaling that caused a delay incomplete masculization step that's left behind the hyperspardias. The exact cause of this I can't answer because it's very dependent on environment and what genres are being turned in and off, which is a very dynamic process during development. Now going back to GnRH signaling, the penis didn't grow in utero because there's too much estrogen bring produced by mom. That's why the postnatal mini puberty is so unique to male babies. The majority of penis growth occurs after birth. On average, that mini puberty when GnRH signaling is on lasts about a month. So I would assume that you're genetically predisposed to a larger starter penis size or you had a longer mini puberty. TL, doctor, development is cool and dynamic and requires a mix of information from your genes and environment. I have a pretty large penis, lol.